Hi students, in this video I am going to explain you NCRT example of the hydrogen and uh, it is exercise, it is question 9.5 the question is calculate the strength of 10 volume solution of hydrogen peroxide 10 volume solution of H2O2 means 1 liter of this H2O2 will give 10 liter of oxygen at STP ok now if you see the stoichiometry then uh, the hydrogen peroxides mass is 34 gram and it gives rise to 1 mole of oxygen means 22.7 liter at STP ok so this becomes 68 gram <coughs> of hydrogen peroxide so on the basis of equation it is clear that 27 22.7 liter of oxygen is produced from 68 gram of H2O2 at STP so 1 liter of oxygen will be produced from 68 divided by 22.7 gram of H2O2 at STP and 10 liter of oxygen is produced at STP from 68 divided by 22.7 into 10 grams so it becomes total 29.9 gram which is approximately equal to 30 gram of hydrogen peroxide therefore strength of hydrogen peroxide in 10 volume of H2O2 solution is equal to 30 gram per liter and if you find its percentage it becomes 30 upon 1000 in 200 which is 3% of H2O2 solution thank you uh, hi students <coughs> in this video I am going to explain you NCRT solved example of uh, question 9.5 okay hi students in this video i am going to explain ncrt exercise of unit hydrogen uh, ncrt exercise number 9.36 so the question is what do you understand by term hydrogen economy so hydrogen economy means uh, uh, the vision to use hydrogen as a fuel in uh, industries in power plants for uh, running of motor vehicles etc so the main principle of uh, hydrogen economy is production storage and transportation of energy in the form of liquid hydrogen the next question is hydrogenation it means addition of hydrogen across unsaturated system means having double or triple bonds to form saturated compounds so like uh, vegetable oil on reaction with hydrogen and nickel catalyst and uh, temperature it changes into uh, vegetable ghee okay it is a saturated compound now question arises why we undergo hydrogenation because these uh, vegetable oils when it is exposed to air for longer period then the double bond present in them undergoes oxidation and develops uh, unpleasant smell so to avoid the oxidation process of these unsaturated compounds or unsaturated oils hydrogen gas is bubbled 
in the presence of uh, finely divided nickel powder and the temperature range so that it gets converted into solid fats thank you the next question is syngas the mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is called syngas or synthesis gas so it is produced when steam is passed through hydrocarbon for example methane okay at a very high temperature in the presence of nickel catalyst then syn gas is produced this is called syn gas because it is used for synthesis of other useful compound like methanol and uh, if you want to form the syn gas there is another method which is device nowadays is called coal gasification reaction in this in place of hydrogen we take charcoal and uh, condition remains same and we get the same product okay uh, actually this source of carbon um, is not charcoal it is it is produced from sawdust or scrap wood or newspapers etc so from uh, here we can get the syn gas next question is water gas shift reaction so <clears throat> the amount of hydrogen in the water gas can be further increased by oxidizing the carbon monoxide gas into carbon dioxide so this carbon monoxide gas is further treated with the <coughs> steam and uh, when we treat it with steam under the condition of temperature and catalyst then it gives rise to carbon dioxide and more amount of hydrogen is released or produced and this reaction is called water shift gas number 5 fuel cell so fuel cell is a device which uh, converts the energy produced during combustion of fuel into electrical energy actually the fuel cell contains a chamber like this in which carbon perforated carbon act as anode and uh, here carbon on the right side act as cathode so it is connected with the help of wire and inside it base and platinum catalyst is produced uh, is kept hydrogen from the left side and oxygen from the right side is allowed to pass through this steam and because of the redox reaction between hydrogen and oxygen the flow of electron takes place from this perforated anodic side to the cathodic side and the current starts flowing in opposite direction which result into production of electricity okay so it is pollution free method because hydrogen and oxygen give rise to water okay plus electrical energy thank you hi students uh, i am uh, repeating the video of ncert exercise hydrogen this time we are taking exercise 9.35 the question is how does h2o2 behave as bleaching agent h2o2 uh, act as a bleaching agent because of this nascent oxygen which it releases on decomposition so this uh, nascent oxygen it uh, combines with the colored matter and get oxidized 
and becomes colorless okay so we can say that bleaching action of hydrogen peroxide is due to the oxidation of colored matter with the nascent oxygen and because of this property it is used to bleach uh, items like silk wool feather etc thank you uh, hello students in this video i am going to explain ncrt exercise of hydrogen ncrt exercise 9.34 the question is do you expect different product in solution when aluminium chloride and potassium chlorides are treated with normal water acidified water and alkaline water write the equation wherever necessary so uh, we you, you have to treat aluminium chloride and potassium chloride with these three agents now we all know that kcl is a salt of strong acid and strong base so uh those salts you know which are uh, salt of strong acid and strong base they do not undergo hydrolysis okay for condition to undergo hydrolysis is that the salt should be either salt of strong acid weak base or weak acid strong base okay <coughs> so now this kcl will not undergo hydrolysis it will simply uh in water will get dissociate into ions okay the potassium ion and chloride ions so we can say that kcl is in the aqueous solution uh, kcl is neutral so it will it will do not react in uh, acidified water it will not react in the basic water okay it will remain as such in the form of ions now i will come to next species which is aluminium chloride okay alcl3 now uh, you know that aluminium chloride Uh, is a salt of uh, weak base and strong acid this is strong acid and this is weak base okay so when we treat aluminium chloride in normal water it will form the same thing as i was mentioning you aluminium hydroxide and uh, three molecules of hcl okay so reaction is balanced now another thing we have to treat this solid aluminium chloride in acidified water acidified water so there it get dissociated into aluminium ion and chloride ions next is aluminium chloride in basic ya alkaline water there it get dissociated into aluminium hydroxide ion and chloride ion okay this aluminium hydroxide ion can uh, further can further react with the hydroxide ion or alkali solution to form alo2 one negative ion plus water plus chloride ion so this is how uh, we can compare the difference in reactivity of hcl and alcl3 toward these three conditions thank you hi students uh, in this video i am going to explain ncrt exercise of uh, 11th class hydrogen chapter ncrt exercise 9.33 question is what do you expect from the nature of hydrides if formed by the element of atomic number 15 19 23 44 with dry hydrogen and compare 
their behavior toward water now element having atomic number 15 uh, is phosphorus so it is a non metal and we know that non metals form covalent hydrides okay so the covalent hydride is nothing but ph3 the next uh, element having atomic number 19 so 19 is for uh, potassium which is a uh, group number one metal or alkali metal so it will form uh, saline or ionic hydride and uh, it will be kh potassium hydride third element with atomic number 23 is vanadium okay and uh, it is element of group number three in uh, d block so d block elements forms metallic hydride these metallic hydride are also called interstitial hydride so this is vanadium hydride ratio appears to be one one but actually it is not so it is one ratio 0.5 now the next element having atomic number 44 so this is a transition metal ruthenium and it is a metal of group number 8 and uh, it do not form any hydride okay so there is a hydride gap okay no hydride is formed by ruthenium now the question is compare their behavior toward water okay so only hydride which react with water and evolve hydrogen is the potassium hydride when it react it forms koh and hydrogen gas okay so we can uh, balance the reaction it is solid and it is again it should be the liquid okay so this is gas so like this <coughs> we got to know that the only reactive hydride is ionic hydride thank you students in this video i am going to explain you ncrt exercise of hydrogen question number 9.32 the question is how can saline hydride remove trace water from organic compound so trace water means very little amount of water uh, what do you have to do you take a desiccator okay and then desiccator at the bottom you put saline hydride and above the uh, perforated panel we put organic compound and then cover the glass of desiccator keep it for overnight then the trace amount of water which is present in the organic compound this trace amount of water it react with the saline hydride which is sodium hydride or calcium hydride and escapes hydrogen gas now metal hydroxide is left behind and if little amount of organic solvent is also present in uh, uh, the organic compound that can be distilled over so like this we can separate the trace amount of water from organic compound thank you hi students in this video i am uh, going to explain you ncrt exercise of unit hydrogen uh, ncrt question 9.31 the question is what is the difference between terms hydrolysis and hydration so the first I will discuss uh, hydrolysis okay so hydrolysis means interaction of H plus ions and hydroxide ions of uh, water with the anion and uh, cation of salt respectively okay. 
okay so it give ac dan base okay so this process is called hydrolysis so i am uh, taking the example of sodium carbonate when it react with water it give rise to sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid so this is acid this is base and this is the salt on the other hand hydration means addition of water okay to the ion or molecule to form hydrated ion or hydrated salt so let me take example of nacl when it uh, gains some uh, moisture then it changes into na plus ion in cl negative ion so nacl becomes like moist copper sulfate which is white in color and when it react with five molecule of water it forms hydrated copper sulfate so its color becomes blue so this is a hydrated salt okay and this is the hydrated ion thank you uh this is uh in this video i am going to explain the ncrt exercise 9.30 of unit hydrogen the question is keeping in view of properties of water and heavy water do you think that d2o can be used for drinking purpose actually uh, d2o is uh, injurious for our uh, uh, biochemical process it is injurious to human beings as well as plants and animals because it slows down the rate of reaction all the catabolic and anabolic reactions which are taking place in our body so heavy water do not support life like ordinary water thank you uh hi students in this video i am going to explain in crt exercise of uh, hydrogen this is in crt question number 2 9.29 what properties of water make it useful as a solvent and what type of compounds it can dissolve and what type of compound it can hydrolyze so uh, water has a high dielectric constant its value is 79.39 and its dipole moment is 1.84 dibai so because of uh, this property water dissolve most of uh, ionic compounds and even many covalent compounds that is why water is called as universal solvent whereas a uh, ionic compound dissolve in water due to the ion dipole interaction water act as a dipole and uh, ionic compound is the ion so on the other hand covalent compounds such as uh, alcohols urea glucose sugar it get dissolve in water because of the hydrogen bonding now the next question is uh, what type of compound it can hydrolyze this is the second part of the question so water can hydrolyze many metallic and non metallic oxides it can also hydrolyze some hydrides carbides nitrides and phosphides and some other salts so these reaction h plus ion and hydroxide ions of the water 
interact with the anion and cations of these compound respectively and uh, it leads to the formation of acid and base for example i am taking the metal oxide first of all it react with the water and form hydroxide aqueous medium so this is the cation and anion of uh, this metallic oxide and water contains h plus and hydroxide ion so the cation is getting interacted with the hydroxide ion okay and is forming the calcium hydroxide ion now i'm taking non metallic oxide like sulfur dioxide it can also hydrolyze in water and it forms sulfurous acid okay now i'm taking the case of hydride like calcium hydride it also react with water and forms calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is also released so we will put here two then i was talking of carbides like calcium carbide it also react with water get hydrolyzed by forming calcium hydroxide and acetylene gas okay so that is why the water has unique ability to react with metals oxide non metal oxides uh metal hydrides and metal carbides thank you hi students in this video i am uh, explaining ncert exercise question question number 9.26 is demineralized water useful for drinking purpose if not how can it be made useful so demineralized water is not useful for drinking purpose since uh, it do not contain those useful minerals so if we want to make it useful for drinking then uh, definitely proper amount of minerals should be added but the point is the point of argument is our food contain all the useful minerals so why we should add the mineral in the water uh, but as far as my personal opinion is concerned we should avoid drink, drinking demineralized water for longer duration of time because uh, it has been observed those who are using uh ro water and uh, demineralizing the water to greater extent they are facing bone related problem in uh, coming uh like after a few years okay particularly in the old people so it is not good to take demineralized or distilled water for drinking purpose for long duration thank you hello students i am uh, discussing in this video and crt exercise of hydrogen and crt exercise 9.26 it is a question of uh, journal appeal is demineralized water useful for drinking purpose if not how can it be made useful so demineralized water is not useful for drinking purpose since uh, it do not contains useful minerals and uh, how it can be make useful so it's a common sense we can make it useful by using minerals in proper amount uh in the demineralized or distilled water and uh, at the same time this is also the point that uh, our food contain uh, useful minerals so few people say that even demineralized water is fit for drinking purpose but as far as my personal opinion is concerned for a long duration demineralized water is not fit fit for drinking purpose because uh, a few minerals uh, you may not get from water so for the long duration this is not accepted 
to take demineralized water thank you hi students uh, in this video i am going to explain ncrt exercise of hydrogen this is question number 9.20 the question is complete the equation so lead plus h2o2 this is the question after uh, the reaction between lead and hydrogen peroxide lead changes into lead sulfate and hydrogen peroxide changes into water so this is also asked what type of reaction is this this is a redox reaction because in lead oxygen is added and sulfur is electronegative species this is also added so lead is getting oxidized and in hydrogen peroxide the oxidation state of uh, oxygen is minus 1 and it is changing into minus 2 in water so it is gaining one electron so this is a reduction process so this is a redox reaction now question number 2 is mno4 negative plus h2o2 both are in aqueous medium okay so this is part 2 of ncrt 9.20 so this uh, overall reaction I'm writing MnO4 negative plus H2O2 in the acidic medium it uh, gets reduced into Mn2 plus sign and also give rise to water and oxygen. So upon completing the equation we get this overall equation. So this uh, MnO4 negative permanganate ion is changing into manganese ion by gaining uh, 5 electrons because the oxidation state of manganese here is plus 7 and it is changing into plus 2 and uh, so it will gain electrons so this is a reduction process and H2O2 is getting oxidized okay so this what H2O2 is undergoing oxidation so this is a, again a redox reaction third is calcium oxide plus water this is actually steam and this is solid so when we treat it it forms calcium hydroxide aqueous medium the question is asked what type of reaction it is this is hydrolysis reaction because water is getting added and next is aluminium chloride and water so it gives rise to aluminium hydroxide and HCl upon uh, balancing the equation 3 and 3 6 so 6 hydrogen 3 oxygen on the left and right side so this is also a uh, hydrolysis reaction because water is getting reacted it is being added next is calcium nitrite on reaction with the water it gives rise to calcium hydroxide and ammonia and uh, you can balance it two nitrogen both side and uh, 3 calcium both side and uh, 6 plus 6 12 so 12 hydrogen both side and 6 oxygen both side so in this also water is getting added so this is also hydrolysis reaction thank you uh, hello students in this video I am going to discuss NCRT exercise of hydrogen exercise number 9.19 the question is consider the reaction with the fluorine and suggest in terms of oxidation and reduction which species are oxidized and, or, and reduced so uh, this is fluorine and uh, we have to react it with water when we do the reaction it gives rise to oxygen proton and fluoride ions now we'll uh, balance the reaction if we put here two fluorine then it becomes four fluoride ions and in order to 
if there are four fluoride ions it means four protons should be there so we have to make it two molecule of water now uh, fluorine is uh, gaining electron so this is undergoing reduction okay and the species which undergoes reduction act as oxidizing agent okay because oxidizing agents are electron acceptors and here water is undergoing oxidation water is undergoing oxidation so it will act as reducing agent and reducing agents are electron donors so this is changing after oxidation into H plus ions thank you uh, hello uh, dear students uh, I'm switching to the NCRT exercise of hydrogen question number 9.18 the question is what do you understand by autoprotolysis of water so autoprotolysis means self ionization okay self ionization of water and uh, we can uh, represent it like this this is water and uh, it itself loses one electron and changes into hydroxide ion and another water molecule gains electron and changes into hydronium ion so due to the autoprotolysis uh, water is uh, amphoteric in nature amphoteric in nature it means um, it reacts both with acid as well as base uh, and uh, it uh, behave as a base when it uh, reacts with the uh, stronger acid than itself for example hydrogen sulfide in the aqueous medium is more acidic so it gives rise to hydronium ion and uh, HS negative ion and uh, it act as acid water act as acid when uh, uh, it reacts with the base okay so here the water being acid will lose H plus ion and will change into hydroxide ion and uh, NH3 will accept the proton and will change into ammonium ion so this is the Bronsted concept proton acceptor is base and proton donor is acid the same thing we are observing in both the examples thank you structure of water and H2O2 uh, water uh, bears oxygen which is sp3 hybridized and due to the stronger lone pair lone pair repulsion its uh, bond angle decreases from uh, 109.5 degree to 104.5 degree and uh, water forms a band shape as I have shown here in hydrogen peroxide uh, this uh, H2O2 uh, forms a non planar structure in which two oxygen atoms they are linked with each other with a single covalent bond and each oxygen is further linked to hydrogen atom by single covalent bond and uh, both this OH bond and this OH bond uh, lie in different plane and uh, the dihedral angle between these two planes is uh, one 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 point five degree in gaseous state and the same angle changes to ninety point two degree in the solid state so it forms a open book like structure thank you uh, hi students uh, in this video I am going to explain you NCRT exercise of uh, hydrogen uh, this is in CRT question 9.16 uh, 
and we have to arrange the calcium hydride, beryllium hydride, titanium hydride in increasing order of electrical conductance. Okay, so first of all, uh, this uh, beryllium hydride uh, is a covalent hydride, so it do not conduct electricity at all. And comparing the calcium hydride and titanium hydride, we know that titanium is D block uh, metal, so its metallic character is high, so its conductivity will be maximum. So this will be the order. So question number two: Lithium hydride, sodium hydride, cesium hydride arrange in increasing ionic character. In case of the ionic character, if electronegativity is less, then ionic character becomes more. Okay, and uh, you can also relate it with the size. Uh, uh, so. The cesium hydride has maximum size, least uh, electronegativity because it lies down the group at the bottom of the group, so its ionic character will be maximum. Sodium hydride and lithium hydride, the lithium hydride will have least ionic character because of its small size and more electronegativity. So this will be the order. Next question is hydrogen, deuterium, and fluorine in increasing bond dissociation enthalpy. Uh, in case of deuterium, uh, due to the greater nuclear charge, the DD bond pairs are strongly attracted toward each other, so it is difficult to break the bond. Bond dissociation energy of deuterium becomes high as compared to that of hydrogen molecule and uh, fluorine has least uh, bond dissociation energy because each fluorine has three lone pair and size is also very small so greater inter electronic repulsion causes the bond pair to stretch so bond becomes weak and dissociation energy becomes least so this will be the order next question Sodium hydride, magnesium hydride and water we have to arrange in increasing order of reducing property. So reducing property depend on the bond dissociation energy. If bond dissociation energy is least then the reducing property will become more because hydrogen can be easily given or donated to other species to get reduced. So uh, sodium hydride will have the highest reducing power because its size is maximum if we compare it with magnesium and oxygen and water water has the least oxygen has the least size so its bond decision energy is maximum so its reducing power is minimum and this becomes the order thank you